What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I have my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey and every once in a while throw in other whiskey related content. Today is a really big day. Today's the video where I'm announcing my 2022 whiskey of the year. It's a really good one. Stick around. I can't wait to share it. All right, so I've been building up to this video for a few weeks now, and honestly, guys, I had a lot of really good whiskey this year in 2022. Uh, lots of bangers, but this one is definitely among my favorites, and it's certainly my favorite in terms of what's affordable, because affordability was a factor when considering whiskey of the year. It doesn't need to be like a cheap budget whiskey, but it does need to have an accessible price tag. Last year, my whiskey of the year was the Craig Alkey 13. I know a lot of you out there really enjoyed that one. Obviously, I'm sure there's some of you who are tired of hearing me carry on about it. So you can take solace in the fact that at least for the next little while, I'll have another whiskey that I can drone on about. Now, I do think my pick this year is going to be a little bit controversial because it's a no age stated whiskey, which I'm sure already has a few of you out there shaking your heads. But the age statement thing aside, this is craft presented, it's delicious, and I think it strikes the perfect balance between challenging and accessible. As far as I'm concerned, this is more accessible than the Craig Alkey 13, my pick from last year. Uh, it's not a whiskey I reviewed before on the channel, so this video will kind of have a double duty as a review as well. So later on, I'm going to give you guys some tasting notes as well as a score. And yeah, I guess that's enough build up. Let's jump straight to the big reveal. In the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Guys, my whiskey of the year for 2022 is Brook Laddie, the classic Laddie. I really love this stuff. I think it's fantastic. I think it is one of the best affordable whiskeys on the market today. Not only is it really good, it's also very widely available. Most of you out there should have no problem finding this stuff. The thing about this stuff is that I don't think everyone is on board with it just yet. I think there's a lot of people out there who remember when it was first released. When it got first got released, uh, it was a little bit sharp. It was a little bit hot. It definitely wasn't as refined as I think it is today. Secondly, when it got released, it was replacing a previous version that had an age statement. There used to be a Laddie 10 year old. That was back when Brick Laddie was under its previous master distiller, a guy by the name of Jim McEwen. Uh, he left in 2015. Nowadays, Brick Laddie's master distiller is a guy named Adam Hannett, and I think he's taken a pretty interesting approach when it comes to the classic Laddie. Um, he's not necessarily going for like absolute consistency with this whiskey. What he's doing is he's very much designed it to be a batch whiskey, so inevitably we're going to have variations between different batches. And take it from me guys, some of the batches are quite different. Uh, between my friends and I, we've probably gone through like, I don't know, maybe five or six bottles of this stuff this year. We like it that much. And uh, while most of them I would say are quite similar, there are a few that stray from the others by a good margin. Some are going to be more salty and coastal, some will be more like metallic and sharp, others more rounded and floral. Again, consistency isn't really their top priority and I realize that is going to bother some of you, which is understandable because they're not all made the same. Some batches are better than others. But nevertheless, I'd say that the overall quality is almost always fantastic. I haven't had a single bottle of this stuff that I didn't like this year. It makes whiskey of the year because while we do get a little bit of variety between batches in terms of flavors, it barely wavers in terms of quality. What's cool with this stuff is that you can type your bottle code into the website and it'll give you more details about the batch that you've got specifically. Uh, every batch of this stuff is made using completely unpeated Scottish barley. In terms of age, our youngest casts are like 5 to 6 years old, and the oldest are usually around 12 to 13 years old. Our barrels here are going to be mostly ex-bourbon, but you will find some wine casks or some wine season casks in the mix as well, but the precise cask makeup will be different between batches. And of course, as we all know, all whiskey is going to be batch whiskey, but some brands prioritize consistency more than others. So if you look at a brand like, say, Glen Morangie, they're definitely going to be pushing for consistency more than brands at the other end of the spectrum, like Brooklady or Springbank, who really embrace the batchy nature of their whiskey. Anyway, uh, going back, I did mention this used to be a 10-year-old whiskey back in the day, and I didn't actually love it back then. Um, I found it to be quite hot, quite sharp, and of course, nobody likes to see an age-stated whiskey transition into a non-age-stated whiskey and especially this one at the beginning, also quite hot, quite sharp. So like a lot of people, for the first few years, I kind of wrote this stuff off. So for those of you out there like me who tried it early on and weren't really impressed and haven't come back to it since, I would urge you to try a, a more recent bottling. It's really good. It's so much better than it used to be. This is a great whiskey. 
We've got some wonderful flavors in here. This whiskey is completely naturally presented, so there's no color, there's no chill filtration. Our ABV comes in at 50%, which is great. Um, really quick, I'll go through some tasting notes with you guys. On the nose, we have some bright, zesty florals and honeys. It's spirity, but it's not too youthful. It's malty. We've got lots of cereals and grains and brown sugar. We also have some jammy red fruits at the back, kind of like a strawberry jam. Uh, this is a very bright and clean and engaging nose. On the palate and finish, we have barley, we have cereals, there's brown sugar, there's ginger, there's orchard fruits, so like apples and pears. There's even kind of like a, a champagne note in here. Now be warned, there is a bit of a metallic tinge to this whiskey. I think it works great with the zesty character, but it's not going to be for everyone. Overall, this is just a very bright and clean and spirity and sprightly whiskey. So yeah, I love this stuff. I do think it's getting some love these days, but I'm sorry, not enough. It deserves more. Uh, I'm sure that has to do with the fact that it's no age stated and that it was kind of like sharp a few years back, but this is so good. I think it's better than the vast majority of 10 or 12 year old whiskeys on the market. Hot take here, I like this more than stuff like Deanston 12 or Bonahaven 12 or even Aaron 10. A lot of these sort of like trendy bottles that whiskey tube and connoisseurs seem to love these days. And that is not a knock on those bottles. They're all fantastic. They all deserve the praise. I just want to stress how much I like this stuff. Yeah, I just really love the character we have here. It's bright, it's clean, it's zesty, it's sharp, but it's sharp in the right way. It's not like youthful, it's not unintentional. It's just a nice little zing that we have. Uh, also, what I love here is that our wine casks are used very sparingly. This is a predominantly bourbon profile, and I like that. And even our bourbon influence here is not heavy handed, like we don't get these huge oaks and caramels and vanillas in here. Uh, it's bright, it's vibrant, it's spirity. I wish more whiskeys had a lighter touch like this when it comes to cask influence, where our casks do impart some flavors, they impart some complexity, but they also let the distillate talk. So yeah, plenty of character here. I just love it. I have heard some people describe this stuff as generic and I firmly disagree with that. Uh, again, for those of you out there who tried it a long time ago and kind of dismissed it, I really do encourage you to come back around to it with an open mind. It's a great whiskey. It's a classic. Laddie. So in terms of score, I'm going to give this one a 90 and not just because I think it's a great whiskey. It's also one of the most reachable bottles I had this year. As I said, my friends and I have probably gone through like five or six, like we've been plowing through this stuff responsibly. Plowing responsibly. Plowing responsibly. Also a great lesson to teach your teenage sons, by the way. Anyway, going back to score, as I said, this one is a 90, but it's not totally consistent. I have had it waver. Some of the lesser batches can go as low as maybe 86 or 87, but the vast majority are much better than that. They're usually like 88, 89, 90. So yeah, this stuff is available. It is affordable. It is naturally presented. It is delicious. I genuinely think this deserves a lot more love than it's getting, guys. I think when you factor in price and value, this is easily one of the best whiskeys on the market today. Now, how would this size up against my pick from last year? How would this compare to the Craig Alkey 13? Well, my answer there is a little bit boring. I can't choose. I love them both equally. It's like asking me to choose my favorite kid. I mean, I don't actually have kids myself, but my brother has a couple and I love them equally. Actually, that's not true. One's a pain in the ass. And now I'm hoping my brother does not watch this video. It's probably fine. He doesn't really drink whiskey. I don't think he watches these videos. Also, I didn't specify which kid. It's the boy. Point is, I like them both equally. Guys, if you have not had a bottle of the Classic Laddie recently, I definitely think you should go out and give it another try. It's such a great whiskey. It's consistently delivered, even with that variation between batches. Fantastic, obviously, whiskey of the year. Recommendations don't get much higher than that, so definitely check it out. Finally, I know a bunch of you have your own whiskeys of the year ready to go. Some of you have been teasing me with them in the comments in my previous videos. I cannot wait to find out what they are. So yeah, I mean, 2022. Tell me what whiskey got you fired up, what got you excited, what got you hot and bothered. Hot and bothered. Fuck it, it stays in. What whiskey got you hot and bothered this year? What's your whiskey of the year? Anyway, that is it. That was my whiskey of the year. I hope you enjoyed the video. More importantly, I hope you enjoy the whiskey. 
I want to send a big thank you out to all of you who helped support the channel just through watching and engaging. Like the growth, the views, the engagement this year have just been incredible. I'm genuinely honored and flattered and even a little bit surprised that my opinions resonate with so many of you. But again, big thank you. And that'll be it. Uh, we'll do the like, comment, subscribe, this Patreon, all that stuff. Um, have a very Merry Christmas, guys, and enjoy your holiday season. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.